Let's say your company is set up this way. You have one SQL Server named Reno, which is handling all of the requests for the company's databases. Now you have a small number of requests coming in that need the traditional Spanish collated version of SQL Server installed on it. So the idea is to get another SQL Server named Bogota and install it with the traditional Spanish collation. The machines that need the data from the Reno server hit the Reno server. And then you name the server Bogota and then install SQL Server on it. This becomes your Bogota SQL Server. You only have one office location, so both of these servers are installed at your headquarters. Did you know that you could just install SQL Server a second time on that same server you already have and not need to buy a new machine? In this diagram, we installed SQL Server, used traditional Spanish collation, and then named it Bogota during the installation. This section will show you how to install a second instance on a server that already has SQL Server. This system has Windows 7 installed. At this point, I'm opening up my box of SQL Server 2012, and I'm going to place it in the DVD drive. The operating system has detected that this DVD was put in, so just click the Setup of SQL Server by clicking this link. This little splash screen lets us know that it's working on our request. And now we're presented with a window that has lots of choices. Let's put that in the center. It defaults to the planning section of the window, but what we want to do is the installation, so we're going to click here. Installing can also mean upgrading, and installing might be on your own personal machine or a really powerful cluster server. I'm installing this on a laptop, so I'll click this first link. We get confirmation that our process is working. The Service Pack 1 for SQL Server 2012 has come out, and my internet connection has detected that I probably want to install SQL 2012 and slip the Service Pack in at the same time. So just click Next to start the process. On my three-year-old laptop, this took about five minutes, so I'm taking out several of the frames so we can see the next stage without waiting for too long. Are we ready? Well, here's the set of support rules that said everything passed, and there's just a warning that the Windows firewall... We might want to let people in who we want in and keep out people that we don't. That's fine. Click Next. At this point, the SQL Server installation notices you've already installed SQL Server. So it says, do you want to install it again? Or, do you want to take the installation that you've installed and add new features? Like, for example, did you forget to install SSAS and you really want it? Well, we're not going to add features to our default Reno installation. We're going to install the Bogota installation. Let's click Next. Now we got to specify our product key. With the key entered, click Next. Now we've got to accept the terms if we want to continue with the installation. And now we get to pick the features of SQL Server that we want for our new instance. We're gonna go with the basics of the database engine the client tools, and these other boxes are already checked because we've installed those, and those don't need to be installed again. They're known as shared features. Every instance can leverage off of those features. So let's click Next. At this point, click Next. Now, we've got to pick a name this time. We can't name this one Reno. We already have a server named Reno. This one will be called Bogota. And let's click Next. Let's click Next again. 
Now here, we're going to install this SQL instance with a Spanish collation. We will go more into collation soon. Click on collation, and notice it's set to the default Latin general. Click customize. Click this drop-down box. And scroll down, and choose traditional Spanish. Click OK. And we will accept the defaults for the services. We will accept Windows Authentication Mode. Let's add the current user so they have rights to log on SQL when we run that instance for the first time. And hit Next. Hit Next one more time. And Next again. Here it summarizes what we're about to do. This will be the Bogota instance of SQL Server. And all the other features that we've selected are summarized here. Now, let's install it. At the end of the installation, you might notice this message that says one or more affected files have operations pending. You must restart your computer after the setup process is complete. Click OK. Now click Close. And you can close out of your installation. At this point, go ahead and reboot. So we've achieved our goal of having a Reno SQL Server and a Bogota SQL Server on one piece of hardware. Now, when any given client wants to hook to our machine, it has to choose which SQL Server it wants to connect to. How does that work? Well, it's going to be the same way we connect a SQL Server when we're writing our own queries. Let's give a demonstration of that. Now that we're back from the reboot, let's test to make sure our Reno default instance that we already had is still working, and we can also connect to the Bogota instance. Let's start Management Studio, and let's connect to the Reno SQL Server. And Reno has all the familiar databases, DBBasics, Growth Go, Demo, all of these. Great. That seems to work just fine. Let me close out of here. And let's try to connect to Bogota. Now, a common mistake is you think you're just going to type Bogota in the server name of the Connect To dialog box and hit Connect. This gives you an error, and you're wondering, did you do it wrong? Well, your installation was correct, but this is the Bogota SQL Server sitting on top of the Reno server. So we're going to type Reno backslash Bogota and then connect. And here we are on the Bogota server. What databases does it have? Well, it doesn't really have any. It's its own SQL instance, and we haven't run a reset script, and we haven't installed GProCo or any other database. Once in a while, you'll try to connect to Bogota after an installation, and it might not work. Let me simulate that. Here's a common error you might get. I'm going to start Management Studio and connect to Reno backslash Bogota like we did. And it says, I can't find the instance. That's because the first time you reboot after the installation, the service might not have started for the first time. Let's see what that looks like. Here's the services window. Now I'm going to show you how to get this up. Number one, click start. Number two, in the box type services.msc. Number three, click the services msc program or hit enter and you will notice the services console comes up. And I notice SQL Server Bogota, the status is not started. So I'll simply right click that and say start. Now it's started. Now I can connect. How did I get the services window up? There's many ways. My favorite is to right click the computer, say manage, and click the services and applications, click services underneath it, and scroll down until you find your service. To connect to your default instance of SQL Server, you just need to connect to the name of the server. 
if you want to connect to a named instance of SQL Server, you need to use the name of the server plus the name of the instance. Oftentimes, people install SQL Express and they later realize it's not powerful enough to do what they need it to do, and then they install SQL Developer. If you do that, fortunately, your default instance is running the much more powerful SQL Developer. And if your machine is called Reno, then the default instance is called Reno. The SQL Express version is installed as a named instance. In this case, it would be called Reno backslash SQL Express. Time for lab 3.1, skill check 1. Take a moment to pause this video and challenge yourself to do this skill check. And that will do it for lab 3.1 on installing a named SQL instance. What do we got next? Lab 3.2, SQL Server Configuration Manager.